hey guys, could you come over here? I want to show you a sign I'm showing her. Uh, this glazing. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. Yeah, sometimes that's what I always do for my painting as well too. When you have beautiful marks and then the color relationship, you you don't want to rework on those air area, okay? But you do feel this color could be better being pushed away from hair. You know, it seems a little repeating to each other in terms of the the, the color hue she used for the hair, and then all. Almost the same hue on that one as well too. So that uh, the glazing technique, which is uh, she need a cool color, okay, need cool color rather than warm color. So the two color choices are either favor me or ultramarine blue, okay. Their uh, prussian blue is a transparent as well too. So you can try either one to see which ones work better, okay. So that's called glazing technique. Uh, so which is beneficial, you don't need to change everything, just changing the tone a little bit. But also when you do glazing, the color will become much more glow, especially. So and uh, the phyllo green versus viridian green, some manufacturers have the same one name on the same uh, on 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 the, on, the, uh, on the same tube. Okay, so You'll see some manufacturers phthalo green, as could be viridian green and then phthalo uh, green. Or some manufacturers use viridian green instead of phthalo green, but actually it's phthalo green. They come from same same pigment, but this one has a little opaque to it. But they add probably uh, little white touches, and, uh, but they come from same pigment. But this one you can see is so transparent, but this one. You can see it's so opaque. Okay, so transparent versus opaque. If you're glazing, if you need cover more on the background, probably you can do more of this, uh, more opaque with viridian. If you want to show more to create more luminosity, so use more transparent color. Okay, so and uh, I show you the differences. So if you glaze with this. So you can cover more, and uh, but that's not show through more. This is phyllo, phyllo green. I feel stand closer. You can see this this color is more glow. Because more transparent, and then this color is a little muddy looking. But sometimes, if you want to cover more, you use you use more uh, semi translucent, semi opaque, or semi transparent color, and then to cover underneath more. If you want to create more luminosity, glow, and then you use more transparent color. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, so, so in a sense, for her case, I think. Better to use phthalo green. Victor, is that wet underneath? Is no, it has to be dry. Dry, dry okay. has to be dry. Okay. See how nice this color mm -hmm. versus this color, right? Mm -hmm. But create a little more glow. Too. And then this one is opaque, more floating on the surface. The same idea. It's like a coffee, uh, black coffee. If you dilute it, the coffee, adding water. You see, it look, I'm more orange brown, very transparent. Mm -hmm. If you diluted the coffee with milk, opaque, but lighter gray, but it's very opaque. You cannot see through. So glazing technique, just like you dilute the coffee with water and mm -hmm. create very deep luminosity. So and can you use that for, like, say you're gonna wait? You said you wait six months until your piece is dry. Do you use this, or do you use the Daymar with the full wax, which? 
Can uh, you use that for a glaze? Because uh, this is this is still in the penny process. Okay. And then if you're waiting for six months, you do uh, oh, uh, varnish. varnish. That's a, called painting final varnish. The final varnish. A different okay. thing. As long as you varnish, you cannot repaint over anymore. But this you can keep repaint okay. on top. Yeah, right. Okay. So now the second issue is between this greenish combination versus ultramarine blue. Which one? So you can you can test. Sometimes you need a testing uh, to see which one is better. So this ultramarine blue or transparent blue. Almost all blue more transparent than. So you can see this create a little purplish brown. Do you see that? So I can flat more. And then more. Do you see that? Okay, this little purplish brown, this little greenish brown, depending upon which one you like. So uh, sometimes also it's called the. Uh, 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 it's called uh, uh, bitumen. Bitumen, uh, this color. It's just, just like the tar you can find from Home Depot. That's exactly the same thing. Uh, but uh, this come come with paints. Italian art always use bitumen. It's beautiful, rich brown, very deep, rich brown. Uh, a, a little cool brown rather than a warm brown. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's very good color. For changing a little tone for the background as well too. So, so this is glazing technique. What I what I want to show you. You know, sometimes if you want to create more glow, uh, or you want to quiet this hair right here a little bit, and then you can just do a little touch of bit glazing. Okay. Uh, and then, go on. Do you ever do any glazing on the face? Yes, I do. Like, yeah. Sometimes I'm talking about the three layers. Or the three, uh, three sections? Yeah. Three yeah. Sections. But when you do layers, if for example, a burnt sienna or a little crimson or Indian yellow, it's more trans transparent yellow. Okay. So if, if I do glazing, I either need more yellowish or pinkish or oranges. Uh, or I want to quiet down everything, seems too harsh. I want to create, create more uh, 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 luminosity. Uh, not luminosity, the word, uh, more simultaneous contrast, make it more darker on the face rather than competing the face nice three dimensions and then other things more dimensions. So, and then I glaze over on the face, let quiet it quieter down, darker. So, that's what I do. And then after that, I re re retouch on um, little highlights there and there. And, like and can you do that while it's still kind of like? Wet. Wet. A little bit wet? A uh, little bit wet, do you don't do that because as long as you cannot pick up by your fingers, so you can do it. Otherwise, you will make this uh, transparent color over with the make color muddy. So that's called, those called optical mixing. If you really do wet and wet, that's physical mixing, that's different quality too. So that's why you see Rembrandt has more nice luminosity. The, all those colors was not just physical mix. It's more optical mix. The layer there, and you see the swoop. So that's richer. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, the second thing, what I want to talk to, or give you an example about the broken color theory, because only talk, maybe uh, sometimes some people are still confused. May I use the, your palette to do that? Okay, so before 16th century, uh, the artist using skin color, so that's like uh, mixing white with the yellow curve. A little touch with uh, this, uh, this ochre red. 
for tenure, right? Or a uh, 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 per se, yeah. so either way. If you see 15th century Flemish school, the paintings, that's a skin color, okay? That's skin color, it's color very pure uh, and clean looking. But it's not for not for Titian, not for 16th century artists. 16th century artists start to broken the skin color by adding complementary color. So that's called broken color theory. By adding blue. So the color become more muddier. So that's called broken color. Okay. If you uh, if you apply the skin color, you feel the color too harsh for the skin, and then you need to start. To, you need looking for broken color. You need looking for either complementary or you add burnt amber. That's a beautiful color for broken color. So because this color. It's a more neutralized color. So this color is very good for a broken color. Okay. So any color you feel harsh, you broken down with us. I can create a beautiful broken color. Okay. For any color? For any color. For any color. So, so you, any color you're mixing with, you know, the when you're mixing the color, okay. So you're cooling it down. Grain you're it cooling down. it down. You're graining it down. Yeah. Okay. I like you just adding complementary color to it. So that, that's a beautiful color for our skin. But this color never makes the color muddy. If you add a little bit, never make a color muddy. If other color probably if you add it, it's easier to make muddy. It's especially complementary color. Like this green color, very strong, yeah. and it could make a color very muddy mm -hmm. quickly. So. so that's called broken color theory. Okay, so. so then like in a shadow area of the flesh, you just use more of the Burnt yeah, and then uh, that's other issues. So the burnt amber is a key color for for, for the shadow because more purplish brown, mm -hmm. right? As closer the, the closer to, to to the color theory, uh, you know, the warm light and then the shadow mm -hmm. complementary color color of light, which is violet, and then plus local color skin, the peach. So actually, more like more like the darker like this color. Okay, so that that's that's a broken color. So in some artists do uh, just mixing well on the palette. So my approach, my personal approach, I always do. For example, if I do or peach, and I I just do the peach, maybe too strong, and I pick up. On palette, uh, the, the on the canvas, okay, and I work them down directly on the canvas. So that's why create create a mix, make more fresh. So but broken down on the on the on the canvas, not 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 too much on, on, on this. So that could be another thing we need. You and you need those colors without mixing them on your canvas, right? Not 100%. Because I... That's way what I like. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and then, uh... And then the, uh, the, si the simultaneous contract. So I, I want to re-emphasize re a little bit about this. Okay. Uh, for example... Oh, I just want to do it. If I put this frame against the wall, because this dark, this this dark edges, right? And then uh, you squint in your eye. Do you see a little halo around? Lighter. Yeah. Am I right? Okay. So if I take away, that's no halo. The reason why it's a halo, because simultaneous contact between the dark edges dark shapes against this wall. The dark make light around. So that's called simultaneous contract. That's an illusion, it's not reality. 
but the physics probably try to get uh, uh, avoid avoid it. But artists use that. Okay, so more artists, if artists use that, the, uh, you know, and then the painting turn out it's more interesting uh, because it has interesting simultaneous contrast. I don't have really the thing like uh, at my school. I have uh, the uh, color paper, black color paper. I cut circle the hole, and I put on wall. And then the, you could imagine, based upon this principle, so this is dark around, and you see the halo around on the wall, edges in the center of the circle. Okay, if I take this uh, and the halo around, and then the center gradually looks darker towards the center of this open circle, because of dark, this paper make halo along edges of the circle and then gradually darker towards the center. If I take the paper away, it's flat wall. So that's the reason why I see uh, Iga Shida when she did some faces like this. The same principle. Iga Shida does not paint just like the regular people see the thing. The circular, lighter, the center, gray center is darker. So he used more this simultaneous contrast principle. See, it's just totally reverse. The realist painter paint darker yeah. around back, right? Lighter on center. But he reversed because he used more those simultaneous contrast to, to create this illusion as more painterly. So uh, there's a lot Good, good example. For example, uh, if you try to emphasize simultaneous contrast in, in your painting, the painting turns out more interesting, as from my perspective. And uh, as everybody believes, different thing, of course, in art. Uh, the the artist, what I like, with this illusion, Velasquez. See his portrait more exciting than most artists because he emphasized simultaneous contrast. The face was not just flat face, and then just dark around suddenly it's light, and then becomes so dark eye socket, and then the cheek and this light pick up more here there, based upon those simultaneous contrasts. So his works really inspire me a lot. I think because he used more, emphasized more simultaneous contrast. So make very exciting because it's beyond the cam uh, camera action. So it's only human eye can see those relationships because we see things with more simultaneous contrast. Like one, one I see the red on that and it all surrounded looks more greenish, different kind of green around her because the red so dominant and then pushing all the color around her towards the opposite direction. So that's called simultaneous contrast. So the, the, the brighter color as key, you know, pushing pole, you know, as you know, the pushing pole, this word, right, from uh, Joseph Albert's color theory. So those, the, the simultaneous contrast really have a lot of things you can play play around with, you know, make painting really interesting. And uh, other artists, what I like, Machini, Italian artist. Look, look at the, the, the leaves. The first of all, look at the leaves. How interesting flatness versus little halo. So this is details. Okay, I just want to mention to you. Machini. If you look at the whole thing, this is guy here, and then look at this, and then looks this halo around his neck, and uh, some disappeared because disappeared because the brightness, the light, and then make a neighboring value become more quite flatter. But if if a camera action make everything clear, look like if you uh, you see the photo real estate make everything equally clear, mm -hmm. but the human eye does not acting perceive things like that. You know, we always had focal point, and then we think 
thing, see things together. Okay, some being pushed away, some being pushed flatter, some being pulling out more dimensions. You know, some be focused, some be blurred, right? So, and uh, he always has beautiful dynamics. Those simultaneous contrast. So this is another one. This is a whole composition like this. And then see this relatively flatter, quieter on her because of the white, brighter white around her. So rather than you make too much highlights on her because the, the, the dominant white push her towards more dark side. And then look, look at the details of this, the table. Okay. See how beautiful. Wow. Mm -hmm. Lots of fun. Wow. What is the name wow. of this one? Uh, Machini. M-A-N-C-I-A-N-A-I. Antonio, isn't it? Antonio. Antonio. Yeah, Antonio. Yeah. That's in Chicago. Uh, we have yeah. the collection there. Yeah. yeah. But it's hard to see his uh, work. I know. Last, uh, <laughs> Last month, uh, no, two months ago, I went to Italy. I see more. Ah, what's the name of the painting? Resting, I think. Is it resting? Yes. Resting. Yes. Uh, uh, you pay attention. One to of it. my favorite paintings. Oh, okay. And that's all. So, M A N C H I N E. I think Antonio Mancini. A. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then, and then, yeah, you see the differences. Uh, uh, the the artist emphasis this. Uh, Connery. Connery, he paint, he always American painter, always painting uh, still life eggs, but beautiful, beautiful simultaneous contrast. Look, look how exciting! A simple thing makes so significant because simultaneous, simultaneous contrast, light, dark, name? halo. Uh, um, Con Con Connery, right? Connery no, art. Yeah. C O N C O N A Y R Y. Connery art on 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 the Instagram. Yeah. So this one, this, you see the eggs and a lot of things going on, but all pushing to the dark, relatively more seal seal it, right? Seal it shapes because it's an intense concept. And then see the halo around. The halo, light halo around the, this, you know, this is open, uh, foggy halo. See this very simple thing, but make really interesting because Simon tends this contrast. So you can pay attention to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, try to make, don't make things equally distributed, like photo real estate. So that's make more exciting mm -hmm. from my perspective. Yeah, and then uh, one more person. Uh, Do you know Ron Hicks? Yeah. He, he does that too, doesn't he? Yes, yeah. As far as I see, that's a, that's a uh, Connery too, just motorcycle. Mm -hmm. See the silhouette? Uh, so, uh, simultaneous contact, halo, mm -hmm. you know, halo around. And then the four. The major object is relatively flatter because of the halo, because of lights against. So, and uh, feel here. Feel here, British painter. Beautiful. You know, you can see the organizations uh, for the composition based upon uh, you know, Simon, Ten Simon Tennant's contract. Light, push, dark, quieter, flatter. What's the name of that painter? Phil. Phil. Phil Hill. H A L E. Last name. Oh, yeah. Phil Hill. He always has limited color palette. See the arms so dark because surrounding so light.
that's what I want to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you. I never knew what that was. So, I have a question about the different uses of the blue, but the cerulean when? versus the ultramarine. Uh, cer cerulean. Cer cerulean yeah. blue? Yeah. Uh, so my, my, my mom could become black, uh, suddenly black. What uh, cerulean? Let me see. Oh, cerulean. This is cerulean blue. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's, uh, also it's called sky blue. It's very opa opaque blue. Uh, Serena Blue is only, probably, only, oh, no, not only, probably, you know, the one of our opaque blue. Because most blue are transparent. Mm -hmm. Phthalo Blue, Prussian Blue, and uh, Alternate Blue, that's very transparent. But only opaque blue is Serena Blue. And uh, if, if you need, you know, some, someone doing this, you know, someone want to make more mystery, and then they use very opaque. Opaque, uh, opaque color to, uh, to glazing and then wiping with paper towel. I can do a little touch right here. Let me see. I mean, not dry. Okay. So if I want to make uh, uh, changing the color, make more reddish. So and then you can use maybe the more opaque color because I cannot do a demo but that's not dry completely. Just apply. You will see most part covered. And then you use red and paper towel start to pick up a little more. And then create as like vein like, you know. And something you can see through but not hundred percent like this. Yeah. If if you need something like that, and then you need you can use opaque color glazing. And then any opaque color as long as you add uh, add medium has become more semi opaque or semi transparent. So what are you more likely to use, which blue, when you're doing um, um, facial tones? Uh, facial to ultramarine blue. Do you familiar Turner? Turner's landscape? Turner only use four color. He do black and white. Okay, beautiful abstract, uh, semi-abstract landscape. And then after that, you see burnt sienna. You see uh, India yellow. You see ultramarine blue. You see uh, Alison Crimson. That's only the four color. You, you double check. So maybe I can show you. Uh, that's the glazing technique, the burst, uh, the turn up. Two. So it's Indian yellow, Alison Crimson, black and white. What else? Uh, uh, Alison Crimson. Yeah, I got that. Indian yellow, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. This is Turner painting. See, blue is ultramarine blue. And then yellow is Indian yellow, transparent yellow. Yellow is very few yellow are transparent. And then the orange is a burnt sienna. The reddish, at least in crimson. It's only those four color glaze after black and white. So that's a turn of technique. So you, you can see. Is it burnt sienna or burnt umber? Burnt sienna. So this one, probably more obvious to burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. But burnt sienna isn't transparent, right? Very transparent. Burnt sienna uh, is? I don't yes. think that. Uh, seemed... Depends. Uh, I always use burnt sienna as Winsor Newton. Winsor oh. Newton is always transparent. If you use gambling, it's not, not transparent. It's like a semi-opaque mm -hmm. kind. So burst, yeah. What what kind of brand you have? Windsor. Windsor Newton. Okay. So be transparent. So if you see that, see the golden orange. So that's a term I use for orange color. And then Alison Crimson. That's that's this. Uh, you don't have a transparent yellow here. In a yellow, uh, that's what I use for transparent yellow glazing. So, so, uh, so that's you can see lots of artists doing those glazing technique only. And uh, but for me, I just use glazing technique for certain parts where I want to create a certain area that's not too the brush strokes too. Too 
at Prima. I want to create more little mystery and not do more glazing for certain parts. So, so you could think about that as well too. Okay. But also other things, you know, for example, if, if, if this painting finish and it looks everything so defined, it look like photorealistic. And then to be able to make more painterly, and then some artist doing this, maybe pick up one color, and then glaze everything, and then you see like diffuse edges with transparent color. You, pop, uh, you probably see some artist, and then start after that, and then start to use opaque color, define it a little more, and then you still see diffuse color with glazing. So that's artist doing that to loosen up to make more painterly as well too, rather than let's keep photorealistic edges just too crispy, you know, so something like that. Victor, how many layers do you put on? I mean, yours are really thick and pastel. Right. Do you L lots do layer. lots of layers? And lots you, layer. you, and, and you use that for each layer, it's okay to use that medium? It, okay. Right, right. And then, uh, and again, I just showed... your fifth layer, sixth layer? Yeah, I just, uh, I, th I think every time I put clear medium on, oh, before, you put yeah, before I do, I either put clear medium on, or I do little uh, glazing color touches. Mm -hmm. So either way, rather than just uh, so sense surface already tacky, and then uh, tacky is okay, but you have to wait better, let it dry. And then when you're working on the color, the next layer, you're working wet on dry. I always try to working on wet on wet, even though the surface dry, I just put clear medium. Look like I'm working on a wet surface rather than dry surface. So that's make the brush marks mm -hmm. seems better.